Now that we have discussed how to power your light strips, it's time to control them. If you're using a single color light strip, the only control options that we offer are going to be either dimming or strobing the strips. There are two ways that we can dim a single color strip. The first is to use one of our magnitude dimmable power supplies with an approved dimmer. And a list of those approved dimmers can be found on the product page for that magnitude power supply. We have these power supplies available in 50, 100, and 200 watt models. So if your wattage calculation is over 200 watts with headroom, uh, you will need to use multiple power supplies. With the dimmable power supplies, all strips will be powered directly from the power supply and no other materials are required. Do not use the magnitude dimmable power supply if you're using a RGB color changing strip. The second way to dim a strip is going to be to use a low voltage dimmer. The idea here is that we'll use a static power supply. Take that low voltage output, we will go into one of these low voltage dimmers that we see here. Uh, we've obviously got several different options aesthetically. You know, there's just a standard knob, we have RF, we have a, a wall mount, but this is low voltage. You cannot use line voltage on this. And then we've got some pretty small inline dimmers. This also does some strobe functions as well. You know, this is the easier choice, but there are a couple of things that we have to keep in mind when we're choosing a dimmer. Uh, some dimmers that we have on the website are rated by amperage. Some of them are rated by wattage. Uh, and so we need, we need to keep that in mind. And just so, just so you know, the simple relationship between voltage, amperage, and wattage is actually a pretty simple one. In the industry, we use a triangle, and here's what we do with that triangle. So up top, we have wattage. We put voltage over here. We put amperage over here. Voltage times amperage is wattage. Wattage divided by amperage is voltage. Wattage divided by voltage is amperage. So that's, you know, it's basically they all work in tandem. Wattage is nothing more than an expression of voltage and amperage. Um, that will kind of help you along your way. Now, on the product page for the strip that we want to use, last time we discussed where to find that rated wattage. In that same column, you'll also see a rated amperage per foot of the strip, and it's going to be listed in a number with MA. That MA is milliamps, and there are 1,000 milliamps per amp. So if we have 292 milliamps, that's actually going to be point. 292 amps, and if we want to use 10 feet of strip, we're going to multiply that by our 10 feet, and that's going to give us 0.292 amps. We also always want to put in our headroom of that 1.25 factor, which in this case is going to give us 3.65 amps for that, for that 10 feet of strip. You'll notice that some of the dimmers have got amperage ratings, some of them have wattage. Um, I wouldn't worry too terribly much about that. You know, like this dimmer right here, the LDRF 8A, that is rated for a total of eight amps. And so in this case, we'd be fine because we're not even at four amps. However, a lot of our in-wall dimmers, like this one, this one's rated at a total of 60 watts. So once again, using that triangle formula, we come back around and we realize that that's actually at 12 volts, that's gonna be rated for five amps. At 24 volts, it will be rated for 2.5 amps. Uh, we've got amplifiers, which are going to help substantially with that. On the dash X strips, we will use an amplifier every 32 feet of strip. On the dash X3 strips, we will need an amplifier at the end of each 16 foot strip. These amplifiers are going to connect between the end of uh, the previous strip and the beginning of the next. So let's say we were using a, an X3 series strip here. We've got an input side. This would go to the end of strip one. Our output goes to the end of strip two. And if you notice here, we also have two extra wires that are labeled power supply. Those wires we are going to take back to our power supply. We're, we're not gonna take them back to the dimmer. Uh, we're gonna take them back to the power supply to supply fresh voltage. And basically what's happening here is that dimming command is being passed along the input wires into the output wires. And we're injecting fresh voltage into the strips so that we can combat voltage drop, which essentially makes the LEDs glow less bright further down the line and eventually they stop glowing altogether. If we have a total of six cabinets, each of them being three foot, uh, we're gonna be using a total of 18 foot of strip. Uh, in that case, we would put our amplifier between the uh, strip runs for the fifth and sixth cabinet, which would put us at approximately 15 feet. We can move the amplifier within reason up and down the line. Generally, we say plus or minus two feet from that, from that 16 foot mark. 
when using the low voltage dimmers, you'll see that they all have an input and an output side that's, that's labeled on them. The input side is where we're gonna wire in the power supply. So we'll go ahead and wire that up now. And the output side is where we're going to wire up the light strip. And on this one, you will notice that our light strip is red. Uh, this one comes with a remote control and it's got an on off button as well as buttons for dimming up and down. Okay, so now we have uh, figured out what it is that we need to do to control our strip. Uh, next time we will discuss how to put all of these pieces together to have a fully operational flexible light strip system. If you have other questions or comments, uh, don't hesitate to give us a call at the 800 number listed on the website or send us an email. Thank you for shopping at superbrightleds.com.